more. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. We're really happy to have you. Um, I'm Catherine Zakelli Sullivan, and I am the Sea League SEAL coordinator with the Worcester County Conservation District. Um, as part of our fundraiser and seedling sale, we have a conservation theme and we try to provide some education around that theme. And this year we're looking at forests and forestry in Worcester County. So thank you for joining us with this webinar. Um, I wanna start with just a couple administrative things. You should be on mute when you enter. So if you wanna talk, you're gonna to have to turn your mute off. Also, we're recording this. So if you don't wanna be part of the recording, you can keep your camera off and your mute button on. Um, also, if you want to receive um, forestry continuing education credits, we've been approved for those credits. Um, you could send me a direct message in the chat box if you are interested in those credits and we can keep track. Um, and then, uh, follow, I'll follow up with an email if I've heard from you or email me later. I'll put my info in the chat box for everybody. Um, so let's get on with today's program. Um, today we're going to try to learn what a forester can do to help people. And we have Joe Smith, um, who's volunteered to join us today. He is a forester and he is the owner of Woodsman Inc which is an environmental consulting firm. And has quite a history. He has worked as a forester for the Bureau of Indian Affairs. He's worked for the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Management and for the Trust for New England Forest Lands. In addition, he has been a supervisor with the Worcester County Conservation District since 1995. So, We'd like to welcome Joe. Thank you so much. Thank you, Catherine. Um, welcome, everybody. I'm really happy to see you all here, um, and uh, and and I'm glad to see you uh, connecting with the conservation district. And I hope you all go out and buy a bunch of seedlings uh, uh, after this. So uh, help us out with our sale. Um, and this is part of a number of workshops uh, or, or or forestry walks that we're having. Uh, in, in coordination with the seedling sale this year. And I uh, think Catherine will probably tell you a little bit more about that, uh, what's upcoming. Um, today, we thought that we'd uh, do this as a kind of an interview. So Catherine's going to um, kind of lead, lead me with some questions uh, so uh, we can um, kind of cover the main points about what foresters are and what they do. And then um, you can always um, submit other questions in the chat and we'll cover those before we're done. Well, well set. All right, Joe. Oh, let me find my right paperwork here. Okay, so I'm gonna start out my questions with, can you tell me what a forester is? Are there particular qualifications to be a forester? And can anyone hang out a shingle and do forestry work? How does it, how does it work? Yeah, so it, it, it will, we'll talk in, in, in Massachusetts. And, and first of all, a forester would be somebody who is um, uh, a degree, either an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, or a master's degree in, in forestry or forest management. Um, and uh, they, in Massachusetts, they're also, if they are going to hang out a shingle and call themselves a forester, they have to be licensed by the state. And we have a, um, a board of license uh, uh, for forestry. And that, uh, you know, the, to become a forester, you have to have that degree plus a certain amount of uh, professional experience. And we're required to uh, have continuing meet some continuing education credit requirements every year in order to maintain the license. So yeah, it, it, uh, it, it, a forester would be someone with that degree and, and in Massachusetts with that license. So 
can we kind of start out by you explaining the difference between um, what a forester is and what a logger is? Yes, um, I, I often I, I see people um, conflating the two, um, uh, but they are very different professions. And uh, um, a, 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 I, I, you may think of it like a, an architect and a builder, you know, an, an architect being the one who plans the building and the builder who, who puts it together or executes the plan. Uh, the forester is, is a person who's gonna be on the, the, the planning level, um, deciding what should be done and, and developing a, a, a plan of attack to accomplish it. A logger is, is a person who is skilled in um, felling and, and uh, making forest products, felling trees, marketing forest products, uh, and operating the machinery needed to do that. So they have, they're kind of more like the builder and the foresters like the architect. And in, in Massachusetts, there are foresters who are loggers. They, and, 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 but there's also, there is also a license requirement for timber harvesters in Massachusetts. So um, most people are licensed as one or the other. Okay, I didn't realize that they were licensed for timber harvesters themselves. That's interesting. Yes. Um, so what are the different types of foresters and who do foresters work for? Do foresters work in different capacities and different roles? Yes, and, 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 and so a forester serves the, the, the person who's, who's hired them or, or uh, who employs them uh, and, and a lot of different entities would employ a forester. There's, for instance, there's foresters who work for the state. And in Massachusetts, we have foresters that are uh, county service foresters who um, work with landowners on private property. We have management foresters who, who manage uh, the state lands um, on, on different agencies. Also Fish and Game and, and DCR both have uh, foresters working for them can be foresters in policy positions uh, within government or within uh, non-governmental agencies that work on on forest policy. Um, uh, there's um, uh, land trusts uh, would might have foresters working for them. Uh, on the on the private side, uh, the foresters working in the woods are most often. Uh, private consulting foresters, um, meaning they, they, they're, they're private businessmen, work for themselves, and they, they do uh, work on a job basis for um, different private landowners or even government landowners. Um, and there are foresters we call industrial foresters who work for a logging company or a sawmill or, or, or a timber buyer um, to um, work with private landowners to ensure a supply of forest products for their company. Um, there's also foresters within the academic world uh, who are you know, focused on education or, or research. Um, and, and so there's, there's a lot of different ones. Okay, yeah, that's a lot of different people that we might encounter as we manage land around here. And um, we had a, a comment I just wanted to share um, from a person here who's on a ComCom who really appreciated your comparison between the architect and the builder and the logger and the forester. Although I got those mixed up in order there. Um, I, I stole that from somebody, but that's okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And also, let me just mention that if anyone has any questions as I'm going along with my sort of pre-written questions, please just put them in the chat and we can, you know, I will ask them as they fit in as well. Um, so my next question for you, Joe, is about what a forester does, what their role is, and what's the knowledge base that they bring to the table that makes them important in this process of managing land? Sure. Um, so I think that um, most importantly, we, we, we 
are, are trained or, 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 or study the um, ecology of the forest, uh, how things work in the forest, how trees grow, how, uh, how the forest ecosystem affects us, whether that is, um, uh, you know, how it affects our water supplies, our air, you know, even the, the, the exchange of carbon or wildlife habitat and all that. So there's a lot of different threads. I, I always say that a forester is a generalist. We, we have to know um, a little bit of, about a lot of different things. And, and, and that goes outside the, the ecological side of it too. But um, we, we study the characteristics of trees, how they reproduce, how they grow, how different um, site factors affect uh, it, its life cycle. Um, we need to be aware of the social benefits of forestry uh, or forests. Uh, you know, how, how are they, you know, even, even to the point of, you know, how the aesthetics of the forest um, influence, uh, you know, our psychological health and everything. You know, that there's, there's so many, interactions between society and, and trees and forests that uh, are important to consider when making decisions. Um, uh, we need to be knowledgeable about the uh, challenges and, and requirements of forest ownership. Uh, owning forest land, um, uh, you know, in, can involve you in a lot of different uh, aspects. Well, you, you know, you're taxed uh, on it. Um, you know, the, the, the public may use your land. Uh, hunters may want to go on it. Uh, people might want to hike on it or um, use their vehicles on it. Uh, um, you, you have legal responsibilities and uh, requirements as a forest landowner. Um, you know, certain liabilities so that we need to be aware of that. We need to be aware of the, how, how land is, uh, uh, changes hand in Massachusetts, how it's uh, recorded and, uh, and how to find out who owns a piece of land and where it is. Um, you know, we're, we're able to collect, uh, observe and analyze uh, different uh, information, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, how the trees are growing, how, how much tree growth is there, uh, what type of wildlife habitat is present, how water moves over the site. Um, and, and now it, it's being increasingly important for us to understand how forests uh, play a role in the, in the carbon cycle and how that impacts our, our overall environment. So there's and I probably not covered all of it. You know, it, 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 you, you run into new things every time you work with a different landowner or a different property. Uh, but there, 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 there's a, a myriad of, uh, of things, even, even to the point of, you know, understanding how, you know, we, we're, not, uh, we're not loggers, as I said, and loggers are skilled at certain things that we're not. Uh, but we need to understand how a logger would um, come onto a property, how they would gain access, how they can reach the trees they need to, and how, how they're going to bring that tree down and make it into a product like a log. Uh, you know, we have to have an understanding of how that works in order to work with loggers and get good results for landowners. So that's just a little bit of it. Wow, when you when you put it all out like that, it's really cross disciplinary in what you're talking about. Everything from science to sociology to marketing. So that that's really really broad and really interesting to me. Um, I see we have we have a question. I'm going to keep hold off on your question, Michael, for a little bit longer as we get through things here. Um, so can you talk to me specifically or talk to all of us more specifically about consulting foresters and what a consulting forester does? Okay. Um, so a consulting forester, you know, his, his, their clients are generally uh, woodland owners. And, um, you know, there's a variety of reasons why a, why a 
landowner might hire a forester. Um, but basically, you know, they have they, they have a piece of land and they either have a goal they want to reach or they have a problem they need to be solved. And uh, so <clears throat> a forester, uh, first of all, is going to help the landowner understand, you know, kind of articulate what their goals are and then understand how the different rules and regulations and environmental conditions and ecological conditions on their woodlot would affect their ability to reach that goal. But that's kind of general. If, to, to be a little bit more specific, um, uh, first of all, I'll, I'll talk about the type of um, tasks that I've performed for, for landowners. Um, uh, first is forest management planning. Um, uh, foresters uh, would help a landowner develop a forest management plan for their property. And this plan can be uh, short or long. It can be formal or informal. Uh, if it's formal, it's probably to help the landowner um, uh, get involved in um, one of the forest tax laws, chapter 61 which a uh, forest management plan would be a basic requirement. It might be for them to participate in USDA uh, farm bill programs uh, where a forest management plan would be a prerequisite to uh, accessing um, technical and financial assistance from the USDA. Um, hopefully, most of all, it, the forest management plan is a tool for the landowner to kind of um, gather the information they need and to develop a plan of attack based on that, that program. So if a landowner has, um, uh, you know, wants to reduce their property tax burden, um, foresters can help them get enrolled in chapter 61, which is the forest tax law, 61A, which is the, um, uh, agricultural tax law 61B, which is recreational land. If a landowner has uh, the desire to sell timber from their property or firewood from their property, um, a forester would um, uh, be essential, in my opinion, for doing that and getting the, the, the best price for them and making sure that uh, what is cut is cut for the purpose of meeting their objectives on the property and uh, to making sure that it's carried out uh, so that they're happy with the, with the end product. Um, um, these days, uh, managing forest health is, is, is more and more important where we're dealing with a number of introduced pests that um, are affecting our forest. We have the hemlock woolly adelgid, um, the um, uh, emerald ash borer. And of course, we've had the gypsy moth around here for decades, um, all impacting, uh, and there's probably others I haven't thought of or mentioned, but all impacting the forest. And now we have the changing climate, which is going to impact the health of the forest. So how do you, you know, do you have a health problem on the forest? Are the trees healthy? Is the ecosystem healthy? Um, we, we can help evaluate that and then make suggestions for how to deal with problems that exist. Um, I do a lot of boundary work for, for landowners. Uh, it is really important for a landowner to know where their property is. And, and uh, many times this could be confusing or, or not um, uh, you know, in conflict or, or just not understood. And, uh, a forester can use the, the deeds and surveys and uh, their interpretation of markings on, on the ground to, um, to, to locate where your property is. And especially if you're going to be doing any management activity on the property, you know, we can help you mark the boundary. Um, we generally like to make some sort of semi-permanent mark along the boundary on trees uh, with, um, with blazes and painting. Uh, so that there's, there's a reliable understanding of where that boundary is. Um, foresters can um, help you with wildlife habitat management. 
on the property. I know I'm covering a lot of stuff, but I'll, I'll give you a chance in a minute. Uh, but a um, uh, lot of people uh, value their forest land because it provides a home for, for wildlife. And um, some people might just be want to know that they have a healthy, diverse population of wildlife on the property. Some people may want to be interested in a specific uh, wildlife species that they uh, want to encourage or help. Um, you know, we have um, a lot of good resources in Massachusetts. Uh, we know where there's endangered species habitat. Um, you know, we have a good understanding of uh, how what we do in the forest impacts uh, the wildlife habitat. And for the most part, um, we're our goal, whatever we're doing, is to uh, not have a negative impact on wildlife populations and hopefully help out the diversity, you know, um, uh, make, make it so that there's aspects on your forest land that a, a lot of different species could use. And um, a lot of people have small woodlots that in the overall picture, oops, uh, don't, um, uh, I can't really, you know, large animals might pass through occasionally, but they're not going to be living there. But there are still things you can do. Um, Massachusetts has a program called Foresters for the Birds, which is a nice uh, uh, partnership between uh, the state and Mass Audubon and private consulting foresters, uh, where foresters are trained by Mass Audubon in the state to develop plans for improving bird habitat. And um, you can get, when you're writing a management plan, you can get a special bird habitat or forester for the birds plan. That will be specific to, to birds and, and, um, and uh, uh, help you manage uh, uh, if there's anything different for that. Um, we can get involved in recreational planning. I've, I, we've laid out and cleared trails and, uh, 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 corrected trail, trails, maintained trails, um, you know, I've done a lot of uh, planning for, for that. So um, aesthetics is important. If aesthetics is important to the landowner around your, your house, along a, a, a country road, uh, things like that, that's, that's something we can bring into the planning process. Um, carbon is becoming a big deal and, uh, I'm, I'm learning more all the time. I've, I've, most of my, seems a lot of the continuing ed I've been doing this year has been focused on, on carbon and, and the carbon cycle in the forest and that, how forest and forest management affects this cycle. So we're all learning. This is, this is taking shape as we speak. And, uh, um, you know, if, you know, hopefully if most foresters can speak intelligently with landowners about how their activities affect, you know, the, these uh, climate issues and the ability to um, gather and store carbon in the forest uh, landscape. Um, and um, most, you know, you, you may have heard of carbon markets where people are buying and selling, um, uh, you know, shares for carbon being stored by the forest. And those are out there. There's something that uh, I think you need to be a large, have a large acreage in order to uh, participate. Um, but I think that people are starting to look at how can we, how can we bring and reward uh, smaller landowners for their participation in this. And, and you know, maybe we'll see some, some types of a reward or incentive programs for landowners down the line. And um, the last thing I wanted to talk about is the state planning. Um, people who own forest land are often concerned about what's gonna happen when they're no longer there. Um, especially people who are hands-on management, tree farmers, uh, the forest is around their house. It's important to them that, um, you know, to a lot of people that it continues being forest land, continues being a productive and, and healthy um, uh, asset for whoever owns it. And uh, it can get really tricky, uh, you know, near the end of life, uh, uh, deciding how this land is going to be passed down, you know, and, and 
there's a lot of um, focus in Massachusetts on uh, permanent preservation of uh, forest land through conservation restrictions. And there's a lot of, uh, the state uh, is involved in that very heavily. And um, uh, there's a lot of private land trusts um, that are also participating. So Forestry can help you put you in touch with the right people or help you flesh out um, these issues for yourself on um, you know what's the fate of your of your land so that's uh and 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 perhaps every once in a while someone's going to throw you a curveball and, and and it's going to be outside that list but that's a large part of what uh, what we do well thank you that covers covers a really broad range of things that forester can do um Can you describe sort of um, what happens when you first work with a landowner and how you put things in a bigger picture or understanding of the bigger picture? And, you know, wh where does somebody start? Okay, I'm, I'm going to uh, share my screen. Yeah. Um, sure. Okay. Um, so it, there's a couple of, re, there's a lot of resources out there for, for landowners, especially if you're just getting involved in this. And um, I have to find, okay, here we are. Um, and hit share. Well, I don't know what happened. Are you, you're not looking at the right thing, are you? Let's see. It's starting, here it's coming are. up slowly. It says Joe Smith has right. started screen sharing, but it's just black. Ooh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Okay. Do you, so you see the uh, the website addresses? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, University of Massachusetts uh, Cooperative Extension has developed this great website called Mass Woods. And, and here's the address for it. I'll, I'll take a little trip there in a moment, um, but uh, that's a good address for you to, to, to note down and, and to visit. Uh, included in that is a, a forester finder uh, so that you can get, uh, you know, foresters that work with private landowners have, have uh, registered with this service and, and um, you can click on your town and find the different foresters that um, uh, do work in that area with their contact information. The second address, the longer one, is um, the State Department of Conservation and Recreation um, service forestry page. And I used to be a service forester. That's how, that was my first job in Massachusetts was a service forester. I started in uh, Norfolk County um, back in uh, 1979, I think it was a long time ago. Um, and then um, a little later, I, I was the Northern Worcester County service forester. Uh, from Massachusetts and um, it was a very good job. Uh, it, 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 a, a big component of that job was assisting forest landowners and helping them uh, uh, manage their property. Um, these days, uh, another big component of the job is to enforce or, or administer the state's Cutting Practices Act as well as the forest tax law so foresters might be overseeing the timber harvest on your property um, to make sure that it meets the requirements of the Forest Cutting Practices Act. But they're always there, you know, and I think they probably the, the best part of the job for them is when they get to meet with a landowner and, and look at their woodlot and, and kind of talk things through with them and help them figure out what direction to go in. And so my advice to landowners is always, if you wanna get started, a good place to start is with the um, uh, state service forester. And this is the service forestry page uh, at that address. And 
the major parts of it, they've got this working forest initiative, which covers a whole broad range of uh, programs, the foresters for the birds program, the forest stewardship program and, and something on climate forestry, as well as information on both the Cut Forest Cutting Practices Act and the forest tax law. Um, hey, Joe. The forest stewardship program, I haven't met, yeah. Um, are you are showing you, the website? Because we're not seeing it. Yeah, can you? Oh, you're we're not. Still okay, let me, let me stop sharing and, and let me stop that and start it again. Okay. Sorry. No, no, that's great. Um, yeah, here we are. Okay. We'll see if this works. That's better. I think, I think there we are. Can you see that now? Yes. Okay, there's the Service Forestry website. Um, and let's see, on the side of it, it's got uh, private consulting foresters, um, uh, forms and instructions. Somewhere on here, there is a way to find out what service forester um, works in your area and how to get in touch with them. Little yes, they're map. right there, this map here. Yeah, mm -hmm. this map here will, um, uh, you can download that and find out. It's got the phone numbers and contact information. Um, one thing I haven't talked about is the Forest Stewardship Program. And uh, this has been a, a program supported by the uh, uh, Federal Forest Service and uh, the state foresters. And it, uh, the main focus of it here is it provides um, funding for people to develop forest management plans for their property. So each year there is a bucket of money available to private landowners um, to help them uh, cover the cost of getting a forest management plan written for their property. And a plan written to the forest stewardship program specification um, covers a lot more than just the timber and firewood growing there. It goes into all the other aspects we've been talking about, um, you know, the wildlife habitat, the, uh, the water um, and wetlands, uh, um, the uh, recreational aesthetic uh, features of the forest. Um, so it, it, it really asked, how does this piece of land fit in the landscape? What is it, uh, uh, what benefits is it providing? What threats is it facing? And uh, what are the landowner's goals and, and, and what can be done to reach those goals? So uh, Forest Stewardship Program is something you might wanna click on on this page and uh, learn a little bit more about that. Um, and the other page we talked about was the mass woods. Did that switch? Yes. Okay, so mass woods, this is there. University of Massachusetts website. You can see up top, find a professional. Um, so that's gonna help you locate a forester. Future of the land uh, talks a lot about succession and other issues with ownership, uh, caring for your land, uh, wildlife, forest health, harvesting timber, a lot of good resources on here. Um, and um, it, it's a nice place to explore and I'd encourage you to, to visit that um and uh help you to learn a little bit more about what's out there for you so Joe, um we have a question that's a little bit related to you know finding a forester that can help you um somebody has asked a question it, it says um what makes a forester a technical service provider and um okay. i don't know if you want to take that so or if you want me to help with that one <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll do my best and then you can you can fill in if I miss something. Um, I, a technical service provider or a TSP is a uh, category defined by the USDA NRCS. Uh, there's all sorts of different types of technical service providers. Basically, they're people who are um, qualified and registered to provide uh, certain services to landowners that in, in conjunction with farm bill programs. So uh, if you want to write a uh, 
forest management plan that would qualify you to participate in um, uh, uh, farm bill programs through NRCS, you can uh, hire a, a TSP or a technical service provider to help you do that. And the NRCS will share the cost of getting that plan written. The, 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 a little short time ago, the NRCS and the state foresters got together and made sure that their forest stewardship plans and what they call CAP plans or CAP plans in, in the NRCS world were basically the same thing. So that if you developed one or, or the other, they, they, they met the same standards. And if you did a forest stewardship plan, it should um, also meet the requirements of NRCS. So in order to be a TSP, a forester would have to register with NRCS, um, be vetted by them. You know, you have to provide your experience, your um, references and things like that. And then you go on a list and you have to maintain your position on that list uh, periodically. And if you go into the NRCS office, say, I want to do a management plan, they'll say, okay, here's the list of technical service providers in your area, and you can work with one of them to get that done. Thanks. That's great. Um, and also, not every forester has decided to get that credential. Yeah, just as not every landowner decides to get involved with NRCS either. It's uh, when you get involved with the federal government, uh, there's going to be paperwork. Um, so uh, it's. Hey, we have some more questions. Um, Go ahead. So there's a two part question. I'll read all of it to you um, and to everybody. It's what are the similarities and differences between foresters and arborists? And it follows up with, if you have less than an acre in the city and want to get help in assessing the trees on your property and getting suggestions for what else to plant, what should you do and where to start? Okay. Um, so there, uh, a forester, as I said, studies the um, life cycle and growth of trees, but mostly in the context of a forest environment. Um, so we're, we're more focused on groups of trees um, rather than individual ones. Uh, an arborist generally is going to work in a um, suburban or urban setting um, uh, along roads, you know, street trees, dealing with them, dealing with trees in yards. Um, and uh, they're skilled. They at evaluating the health and um, you know of, of an individual tree and treating uh, different uh, things um, you know that that may be affecting the tree, um, the arborist is probably skilled at climbing trees or 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 you know taking down a tree or trimming a tree and, and so forth. So there is a uh, state association of arborists and they have their own continuing education programs and certification programs and it's a little bit different um, the, the, the two worlds do meet sometimes but um, they are uh, a little bit different skill sets um, they do meet in 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 in, in the world of uh, forest health i would say um, you know a lot of uh, arborists are going to be licensed pesticide applicators or their companies are going to have licensed pesticide applicators because, um, you know, there may be need to apply chemicals or uh, other means to treat certain infestations or, or, or conditions on trees. So, um, you know, foresters are also involved in the issue of forest health, you know, things like um, gypsy moth or how, how it's affecting trees you know we're we're both knowledgeable about that it's just the way different we're looking at it uh in different um landscapes i'd have to say mm -hmm. um joe we're kind of at the twelve forty mark um okay. so just so you have a sense of time here um i wanted to ask a question with respect to um 
the size of a woodlot and you know can someone with a very small woodlot work with a forester and are there limits to that um it, it, so yeah the the, the previous uh, uh, person asked about the one acre too um if if you have questions on individual trees in a yard um, situation, um, you probably want to talk to a, a tree company, an arborist, um, and uh, in order to deal with that. Uh, but as regards to who a forester would work with, um, it, there's really no, there, there's limitations on what it's possible to do, excuse me, but um, there's always, um, uh, the opportunity to help people learn about, you know, their part in the, in the forest and 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 how their little chunk of land plays out or, or interacts with with the larger ecosystem. So, I mean, we we've, we've worked with um, landowners that want to do wildlife habitat improvements. Um, uh, on, on very small acreages. They used to have a uh, backyard forestry program. I don't think that's going on, but I, that's the kind of thing that I'd encourage landowners to perhaps contact the conservation district about, you know, to find out um, what they can do or to get, you know, we have a little library in, in Holden. They might find some information there that's helpful to them. Um, you know, a, a, a uh, consulting forester um, has to um, get a paycheck. So um, a lot of times uh, there's, there's not going to be the type of work that would support hiring a forester on a very small acreage. Um, uh, but you may, you know, you may be able to consult with the serv state service forester or with the conservation district or other sources of um, assistance like that. Um, it, it we are you know increasingly seeing land broken up into smaller pieces or broken down into smaller pieces um, and the average ownership size of forest land owners continually goes down um, the industry i think is trying to adapt um, you know if i had a a logger who was specialized in in working on small woodlots and doing small jobs, uh, that would be ideal. You know, and sometimes you can find people equipped to do that. It's all an economic thing. Um, if you were wanting to sell forest products, there's a minimum amount that makes it worthwhile for somebody to move their equipment onto the property and set up and then try to sell what's produced. Um, but there's always a uh, smaller scale, you know, there's people with, with portable sawmills. If you wanted to cut your own firewood, be glad to help you decide which trees should be cut and which should be left. Um, you know, if you, if you had a, a, a very nice uh, tree, you wanted to capture the wood, uh, make some some lumber out of it to use in woodworking or whatever, you know, we, we, we would be glad to try to put you in touch with people that can do that. In some parts of the world, um, in the United States, there, there are areas where, um, say, black walnut is a very valuable species, and you could sell one black walnut tree for thousands of dollars uh, because there's a lot of specialty uh, uses that are very valuable that can, um, you know, the wood can be used for. But that situation doesn't exist in Massachusetts. And, uh, you know, if you have just a couple of trees that need to come down, um, you know, there's ways to get it done, but it's people aren't going to be throwing money at you to do it. It might cost you money. So. Thank you. Um, I want to invite anybody to ask any questions that they might have that may have come about from our conversation. Um, I also was going to just let you know that we did a poll here and it says that we've got about um, um, 53% of the people who are on the call today actually manage or own woodland, Joe. So that's interesting. And only 
30% of them are working with the forester currently. Um, right. And then we ask questions about what people's main objectives were. And it looks like everybody clicked more than one choice, <laughs> unless it was not applicable. Um, we've got 40% interested in recreation and 40% interested in privacy and aesthetics. We have yeah, a few others. If anyone wants to say what their other response is, that would be cool to know. Uh, the, the, the Forest Service routinely uh, uh, surveys forest landowners and every five or 10 years, they put out a report on the attitudes and interests of, of private forest landowners because in the Eastern United States, you people own the majority of the forest land. And, um, oh, thank you, I can see that now. Um, and so your decisions are very important. And, and every time uh, it, since I've been involved uh, in the forestry world, um, uh, things like privacy and aesthetics and recreation and wildlife always rank very highly. Things like doing a timber sale or, or a firewood sale usually rank rather low in people's interest. Um, but uh, the funny thing is, even though, you know, people, you know, 20% of people say the most important um, uh, aspect owning, owning it is to grow timber, 80% um, of the landowners ultimately at one time or another in their ownership are cutting trees from their forest. Um, so it, 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 it's not just a, a, a way to gain income, oftentimes doing a harvest or cutting some trees is a way to meet other goals, whether it's create, you know, in, enhancing the recreation and enhancing wildlife habitat or meeting other goals on the property. So um, oftentimes it, 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 it turns out that people will um, sooner or later have some sort of cutting going on in their property. Thank you. And, I wanted to share my screen one last time before um, everybody left. Um, and let's see, I, I, I want that off. Can you see that again? And I can see I can the- Find out how I get, okay. There's this book called Foresters in the Care of Your Land. Um, and it would be available through that um, Mass Woods website, uh, perhaps also through the Forest Stewardship website on DCR. And uh, this is a good uh, book to go over, you know, a lot of the things we've talked about today. And there's also a number of other um, related uh, uh, pamphlets or, or, or documents they put out, um, you know, dealing with wildlife, with carbon, with harvesting timber. Um, and you can find those on the Forest Stewardship uh, website. Well, thank you, Joe. Um, I wanted to wrap things up. We don't have a lot of other questions, but we thank you all for coming. And I just um, wanted to mention a couple events that we have coming up. Um, for anyone who would like to join us, we are having two more forest walks um, with people to lead us and describe what we're seeing. We're doing a forest walk next Saturday, March 5th. It's at um, Cedar Hill at Crane Swamp in Marlboro and Northboro, kind of crosses over both towns. And we're gonna be looking at indicators of forest health and going through a site that is characterized as more healthy and one that is less healthy. And we'll be able to look at some of the things that um, signal those characterizations. And then we're doing a final forest walk in Petersham on Tuesday, March 15th. And we're gonna go through and talk about the Forestry for the Birds program that you've mentioned here a few more times that um, is looking at how to enhance forest land for um, bird habitat. So with that, um, thank you all. Do you have any last comments, Joe? Um, 
no, I, I, I would just say that it, 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 there's, a, there's a lot to understand about forest. They're very complex and foresters, you know, don't know everything and, 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 and aren't, um, you know, infallible, but um, it can always be helpful to uh, reach out and talk with people and discuss your goals and take a look at what uh, is happening on your land. And, and I think it can benefit you whether you go on and do anything uh, large and complicated or, or you just, it just helps you appreciate and understand what's, what's happening a little bit better. So always glad to talk to people about it.